so then here we are at Camber Gardens on a quite a wild, wet and windy day. Um, my name is Shelley, I'm one of the gardeners here at Cambo and I'm here to talk to you about our Snowdrop Theatre which we have every year here at the Snowdrop Festival time. So the Snowdrop Theatre is an adaptation of the auricular theatres which used to be little um, display areas for the auricular beauties in the sort of 16th and 17th centuries. So since then, um, in more modern times, gardens such as Chelsea Visit Garden and here at Cambo have adapted the auricular theatre idea just to display our selection of the spring ephemerals that are popping up at this time of year. So I'm going to talk to you about the, um, the naturalised snowdrops and um, other um, genus which pop up at this time of year in the woodlands at Cambo. I'm going to start by talking to you about Galanthus nivalis. So gala is milk and anthus is flower and nivalis is snow so we've got the milk flower and also the word snowdrop is meant and to originate from a schneetropfen which is a german word and to describe the pearl earrings that the ladies used to wear in the um, 17th and 18th centuries so here we've got galanthus nivalis and this is naturalized species here at cambo the, Peter Erskine, Lord Erskine's great-grandmother, Magdalene Erskine, was the lady who started to distribute snowdrops around the Cambo estate and the children, the Erskine children have all had their part to play in the planting or the digging up of snowdrops, which happens in, um, in order for selling the snowdrops, which is happening at the moment in the dispatch area. So Galanthus nivalis, I just wanted to point out some classic features. Um, in 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 the um, this species, so there's there's over 20 different species of, of snowdrops as registered in 2012, and um, Nivalis has um, like the other, like some of the other species has um, classic um, botanical uh, details, such as it's got these three outer perianth segments, which are the large perianth segments, and then inside you've got three smaller perianth segments and on there you've got that classic um, you've got the classic green bridge which is over what's called the notch or the sinus and that's um, a feature of, of the, the Gal Galantha species um, the Nivalis in particular here we've got the ovary and the snowdrop flower hangs from the pedicel and this can be at different angles in the different species and that's how you can um, that's how you can name the different types of species of snowdrop. We've got the snowdrop coming up from what's called the spathe and it comes, it emerges from um, a sheath, which is a protective sheath in the spathe here where the pedicel emerges and then the flower unfolds. It's said to, the flower said to open at between five and seven degrees um, and this is um, when it warms up to allow the pollinators access to the, the anthers which are inside the inner perianth segments there. It says snowdrops are not actually native to the United Kingdom. They're native to Europe and as far over as, as um, Asia. And in the 1980s they were over collected in the wild and there are now special permits that you need to obtain in order to collect snowdrops from their native habitats. Um, they were so over collected that they had to put these permits in place and the, um, the snowdrop went on to a national register to avoid, um, to avoid it basically becoming extinct and it just wasn't being collected in a very sustainable way but the CITES permits which you have to get now mean that there's more sustainable harvesting and those sites are checked every year to make sure that there's enough rejuvenation of the snowdrops. They were, they were said to have been brought over by the monks and, and planted as symbols of purity and there's also stories about the soldiers in the Crimean War bringing snowdrops home in their pockets. So the next snowdrop that I'm going to talk to you about is Galanthus floripleno. So this was um, said to have been um, found and uh, named in 1703. Floripleno just means many flowers. And you'll see it's quite different from Galanthus nivalis, which has the three outer and three inner perianth segments. So if we look <coughs> inside Flora Pleno, you'll see the many inner perianth segments inside. 
and these can be quite different um, in terms of their in terms of what they look like so you could get some which look um, quite evenly distributed in the middle and then others which you can see in this one has got sort of two sort of bigger segments as well as smaller ones this is also uh, naturalized here at Cambo and the double snowdrop was actually um, planted in the in the landscape here in order to enhance it this was done by the Erskine family on their arrival so you'll see a distinct difference as well in some of the other features in Galanthus flora pleno. So you can see the ovary here compared to Galanthus nivalis. The ovary containing the seeds on Galanthus nivalis is much bigger than the ovary of, of um, flora pleno. And that's because flora pleno doesn't actually set seed, but it propagates itself vegetatively by bulbul, bulbuls which, which grow on the side of the bigger bulb. So I've got one here to show you. So when it's forming, when it's forming in the ground, you've got the main bulb and then you've got the smaller bulbuls which grow on the side. So you can see here the flowering snowdrop and then the, the unflowering one, which will probably take about sort of three years to flower. And what happens when it reaches a certain stage is it just naturally comes away and just find its own little habitat and that's how the collections develop in the natural landscape. So the next um, naturalised um, species that I was going to talk to you about here at Cambo is the Lycogen, Lycogen vernum. So Lycogen is white violet and uh, vernum means spring, so it's spring white violet and you can see it has very um, distinct features compared to the snowdrop. Um, often people will think that this is a snowdrop, but it's actually not. It's in the same family as a snowdrop as the Galanthus. So it's in Amaryllidaceae family, but it's actually a different genus. It's Lycogem and not Galanthus. You can see it has the outer perianth segment still, or tepals. But can you see the markings on the outside? These can be yellow or green. And the tepals themselves look like little sort of like ballerina skirts. Again, it, it naturalizes and um, sp spreads vegetatively throughout the estate here at Cambo and looks quite beautiful and is quite distinct features in itself. So here we have the last of our spring eph ephemerals naturalized here at Cambo. And this is Aranthus himalis, or maybe better known as the winter aconite. So air is spring and anthus is flowers, a so spring flower. But himalis is also means winter flowering. So it's got these lovely um, features. It's in the Ranunculaceae family, so the buttercup family. So when it opens up, it's got this lovely yellow golden buttercup shaped um, flower. And then it's supported on these green brat-like um, features at the bottom here, which is, often looks like a choir boy's ruff. And um, it, when it comes up um, around the Simalis, it looks like little bits of popcorn just sitting on the surface of the ground. And, the, and, the, um, and then as it comes up from the ground, the, the rough or the brack develop and the flower opens. And it, all, it looks beautiful in all its different stages. As it starts to go over, the um, yellow buttercup flower starts to look all sort of um, papery and transparent. So it looks quite beautiful as well. These are native to calterous woodlands in France. And, um, and it does really well. It does really well here at Cambo. Um, looks looks really beautiful as it pops up the, the yellow flowers in the landscape. So the nice the, the snowdrops both uh, occupy a very similar similar ecological uh, ecological niche here in the woodlands, so any deciduous woodlands where they make the most of the of the maximum sunlight that comes in while there's no leaf canopy on the trees and they, they occupy that lovely niche during the sort of like late winter and early spring and then obviously they die back and uh, return to the ground um, for when the trees come into leaf and that um, obviously the sunlight um, is, is lessened. If you wanted to purchase any of these collections that are in the Snowdrop Theatre you can do so by going onto the online shop on the website. We're also open for bookings if you wanted to see the Snowdrops you need to buy a ticket online 